Hi guys and welcome to another video. Now here is something rather special. Now some of you have may seen this radio before and some of you may not, but let me introduce to you the RGO1, an all mode HF transceiver, which has been designed and made by radio engineer Boris LZ2JR from Bulgaria. Now for transparency, I contacted Boris and asked him for a review model so I could feature the RGO1 on the channel. Now, everything mentioned in this video is my personal views and I've not been paid or bribed to spin this radio in any positive light where it shouldn't be. Now you would be mistaken to think that this radio is commercially made because the build quality, well, it's just excellent, but it's made by hand by Boris for every specific order. And that's because this radio has a modular design, meaning adding optional features is just the case of plugging them in. Of course, you can spec and purchase a fully loaded RGO1 at the time of ordering. Now, being modular also means that there's no messy wires floating around inside. It's all plugged into that main board. Now, we may take a look at that later in the video. Now, as standard, the RGO1 covers from 80 meters right up to 10 meters, all mode, and can produce an output power in excess of 50 watts with the ability to drop the power right down to 5 watts for QRP operation or to drive a larger amplifier. Now if 160 or 60 meters is your thing, then you can either spec at the time of ordering or retrofit the option boards for these bands. The RGO1 is a pure analog transceiver with a single conversion super heterodyne receiver and transmitter with a 9 megahertz IF. Now what's really nice about this radio is its usage simplicity. It kind of reminds me of the classic ham transceivers back in the day with all the usual and popular features controlled right from that front panel without having to dive into multiple levels of menus. Now each RGO1 is calibrated before shipping and Boris provides the initial factory setting values for each of the service menu items. Now this means you'll always have a record of how the radio was shipped to you in case you alter a service menu setting in the future. Now the included fused power lead is terminated with Anderson connectors on one end and these attach to the rear of the RGO1. The included microphone is a Yaesu style microphone which delivers great sounding audio on transmission or that's what I've been told on the QSOs that I've had. On the rear of the RGO1 you'll notice a rather large fan called heatsink along with a multitude of connections. Now, interestingly, we get an IF out, which is at nine megahertz. Now this means that with the use of an SDR receiver and a computer, you can have your very own band scope with the RGO1. And I'll show you how this works later on. We then have an accessory port, which contains a variety of input and outputs, including a line in and a line out, along with PTT control and certain voltages. The user manual does detail what each pin's for if you're interested. A USB socket is also provided, which when attached to a computer provides a virtual COM port. Now this means you can then remote control the RGO1 from a computer using the Kenwood CAT protocol. PTT and linear sockets are also available alongside a CW paddle and an external speaker socket. Now the RGO1 does have an internal speaker mounted on top and this actually sounds pretty good, but the option to use an external speaker or headphones or even a line out makes the RGO1 quite versatile when it comes to audio routing. Now just above the ground point on the bottom right, you'll notice there's three black circular hole plugs. And I believe these holes would be used with an optional transverter input and output board. Now I don't have much information on this, but you can always contact Boris directly via his website if you need to know more. So let's hook it up to my Enfid half-wave antenna and let's take a listen around the bands. I know what's happening actually. <laughs> All right, so you'd be missing, wouldn't it? Echo Alpha 2, Echo Sierra Uniform, Contest. Echo Sierra Uniform, Kilo 5, Romeo, Lima Papa, Contest. Four. Yes, a couple of times. Yeah, you signal up now. Before I thought I heard you, but you faded way out. But you must have turned the boots on or something. No, uh, I, I, I wasn't tuned up and I, I finally uh, got tuned up and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I, uh, I, I'm just, uh, <laughs> I'm dealing with a lot more issues of snow here. 
I'm just trialling a, a new radio, actually, and uh, just thought I'd... Uh, well, I heard you calling, so I thought I'd call in. How you doing? I am very well indeed, mate, and you're sounding pretty good yourself. Easy five and nine. Easy five and nine, over. Yeah, Roger, mate. Yeah, you're five nine... Uh, um, yeah, so I'm using, right, the radio I'm using, you need to Google this, it's called an RGO1, so Romeo Golf Oscar Space Oscar November Echo. It's basically like a homemade radio that comes uh, that, that uh, comes out, I think it's Bulgaria, and uh, it's, it's a 50 watt HF radio, and this guy builds them uh, himself. And it's and it's fantastic. It's so good. But uh, anyway, how you doing? Uh, M zero TPT M zero DQW. Yeah, I'm really good. I'm looking here now. Actually, that looks really cool, doesn't it? Yeah, no fair play. Well, you're sounding mighty fine on that radio. Uh, the, the clarity is, is fantastic. You're five eight to five nine, uh, but the clarity is brilliant. There's, there's nothing. I wouldn't have guessed. I, I would have said you were on your DX ten or your seventy three hundred or something. So uh, that's doing a mighty fine job. Um, but, but yeah, very very clear and, and very understandable. Over. You are Lima Zulu two three five Italia Romeo M zero DQW. Mike Zero something W. Yeah, M Zero DQW. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey five nine. Yes, yeah, so you're five nine five nine plus twenty here into the UK. Currently testing a Bulgarian radio, the RGO One. How do I sound over? Yes, yeah, 73. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Lima Zulu. 235, Italia Romeo. The RGO1 has an adjustable filter which can be activated by pressing the FLT button and then just using encoder to adjust the bandwidth. You do get some indicators on that LCD to show you the width. Now, within the menu, you will also find other filter adjustments along with other settings to customize the RGO1 how you want, like the LCD back color, for example. Now, luckily, the menu system is actually pretty basic, meaning you don't have to take a master's degree to learn how to use the radio. Now, this version that I've got here has the optional internal ATU installed, which so far performs very well. Again, there is a setting within the menu system to enable this, and once enabled, you just hold the tune button on the top left for a couple of seconds to activate tuning. Now you would have noticed that in the first QSO clip that I played a moment ago, that I had the mic gain set too high, so the ALC LED was illuminating on my voice peaks. To rectify this, you just need to bring down the mic gain by turning encoder two, labeled as keystroke mic. The main RF output power adjustment is changed using encoder one, now both encoders are push buttons as well, so when holding them in, they activate another feature. For example, the bottom encoder, encoder two, will adjust the monitor volume when held in and activated. Now, as mentioned earlier, the RGO1 has an IF output at nine megahertz. So when used with an SDR receiver connected, you're able to see a band scope on your computer. Now this is useful to see at a glance how active the band is or where all the activity is without tuning aimlessly. Now the RGO1 can also make a great portable radio as it's fairly lightweight, and I do plan on taking this out at some point in the near future. The heaviest part of this radio is probably those cooling heat sinks located on the rear. So there we go guys, this is a brief introduction or overview of the RGO1 all mode HF transceiver. Now let me know what you think about this radio down in the comments below, or even if you've got one of these, one of the earlier models, let me know how you've been getting on with it. From the reviews that I've read online, it's mostly been quite positive, considering how this radio come about and how it's actually put together. Now it's more than likely that I haven't answered all of your questions when you've been watching this video. 
But fear not, I'll make another video on this radio if there's enough questions being posted on the comments below. I'm very open to creating future videos on this radio to answer any of your questions. Also, let me know if you want to see things like power testing or even spurious emissions, although I'm pretty sure it's going to do what it says on the tin. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.